Hey everybody, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, assuming that I edit, render, and post this in time for the holiday week. My name is Foxy Sellers, and today I'm talking about the age-old question of who has the better rogue gallery. Is it Batman or is it Spider-Man? But before I do, please click on the like, subscribe below, that way you can get keyed into videos just like this or other lists I do. I wanted to come up with a solution to this question, but I wanted to use methodical math to determine the answer. I didn't want my own preference to pollute the solution. So what I did was I took a whole bunch of categories that I'm going to put each of the villains in, and then I'm going to give it a score from one to five. So the categories that I used were how iconic is the villain overall with its, you know, its overall popularity. Um, my personal preference, because I like some more than I like the how iconic they are, uh, how formidable they are compared to their hero, their backstory and their story of how they relate to the hero, their overall intellect, the justification that they have for committing the crimes that they commit, their overall determination. What is their overall threat to society? One being New York City and then one being Gotham, sometimes the entire world, if it were. Uh, and then I gave a total score based on this. I put this all into a, an Excel spreadsheet and whichever one had the best score overall, won. Now, I did this based on 22 villains. The reason I came up with 22 was I went through Spider-Man's villains and I came up with 24, 25 that were relatively known villains. And then when I got to Batman, I could only come up with 22. So I reduced Spider-Man down to 22. I calculated their score based on their overall 22 most well-known villains. And then I also did it based on just the top 11. The winner was the same whether you'd use the top 11 or all 22. So I'm just going to do the top 11 to kind of give you the idea. And then I'll list off the other 11 that, that we had. So let's get started. Oh, and by the way, I did not include either Catwoman for Batman or Black Cat for Spider-Man. I figure both of them are, you know, 50% of the time they're either a love interest or a hero. And then the other 50% of the time they're villains. So I just figured I'd disqualify both of them. My apologies if they happen to be either one of them your favorite villain. All right, so I'm going to start with the most iconic villain probably of all the characters on here, which is Batman's The Joker. Joker has an iconic level of five. Naturally, everybody knows who he is. For me, my preference is he only gets a four. And I thought my jokes were bad. He's not my favorite Batman villain, so I'm going to give him a four. He's highly formidable. He has a decent backstory, so I'll give him a four there. He's fairly smart, so I'll give him a four there. His justification is he just wants to create chaos, so I don't give him a really high grade in the justification category. His determination is extremely high. His overall threat is extremely high because he's a friggin' lunatic, which gives him a total of 35. <laughs> Next iconic character for Batman is the Riddler. Riddler gets a five as far as his iconicness. My preference is a three. I'm not that big of a fan of him. Uh, he's, he's fairly formidable. His backstory is not very interesting at all to me. His intellect is the highest of the Batman villains there can be. His justification is, is a three. It's not really that justifiable. His determination level is a five. His overall threat is a four, which gives him a total 31. Raza Ghoul who happens to be my favorite villain, not only just for Batman. He's my favorite villain overall. I've always found him the most interesting. I love the Neil Adams books and the Denny O'Neill book where he was introduced. His iconic level is only a four, which, which is fairly high, but he's not as iconic as the, the rest of the Batman rogue gallery. For me, he gets a five. He's, for, he's highly formidable because he, he has plans to destroy the world several times. His backstory is the most interesting. Not so much his backstory, but his relationship with Batman. He's, he ends up being the grandfather to Batman's son. So um, he, he's very connected. His intellect is a five. His justification is a five. His determination level is a five. And his overall threat to the world overall is a five. Just how did you learn who I am? I control a vast global organization, detective. He gets a total 39. 
Penguin, who's an extremely iconic villain, gets gets a five there. For me, my preference, I think he stinks. He's he's a pretty lame character. I'll give him a one. Formidable, he's a two. Because he's a street level villain. Um, his backstory is a three. His intellect is a four. He's fairly smart. His justification is a two. He's just kind of a thief. Um, mob boss, but you know, a thief in the end, or just wants money. Uh, determination, he gets a four. His overall threat is a two. He gets a total 23. Scarecrow, who's a very iconic villain. Uh, for me, he's, he's one of my favorites. I give him a five in that category. He's highly formidable. He's got a decent backstory, nothing spectacular. His intellect is extremely high. He is Dr. Crane. He did come up with the fear formula. His justification is a three, so he's not that justified, but you know it's, it's not that minimal. His determination is a four, and his overall threat is a four, so that gives him a 33. Mr. Freeze, iconic level is a four, just like Scarecrow. For me, Mr. Freeze is a three. I'm not that interested in, in him. As a formidable villain, he's a four. His backstory is a five. He's got one of the more sympathetic backstories. His intellect is a four. His justification is a five, which leads into the backstory. His determination is a five. And his overall threat is a five. If he applied himself, he could freeze the world. So he gets a 35 overall. Poison Ivy is similar to Mr. Freeze. A Poison Ivy iconic level is a four. Um, preference for me, I don't like Poison Ivy at all. She's never been one of my favorite villains. So she only gets a, a two in that category. She's highly formidable because she could render Batman useless you know, with the right mixture or whatever scheme that she put together. Her backstory is a three. Her intellect is a four. Her justification is a four. Her determination level is a five. And her overall threat is a five. So that gives her a total number of 32. Two-Face, he's extremely iconic. He gets a five. My preference for me, he gets a three. Formidable, he's a three. I mean, he's really just, you know, he can get some goons. He's got a gun, stuff like that. His backstory is a five because he's got a closer connection to Bruce Wayne. His intellect is a three. His justification is a five. His determination is a four. And his overall threat is a three, which gives him a 31. Number nine is Bane. Bane, it has an iconic level of four. Preference for me, he's a two. I never really cared about him. Um, he he's less interesting. I found in the comics than he was in that in that that third Christopher Nolan movie. Um, they they did a really great job of making him more of a presence. But overall, in the comics and in the cartoons, he's a two. Formidable, he's a five. I mean, he literally broke Batman's back. Backstory, he's a three. Intellect, he's a three. Justification, he's a three. Uh, determination, he's a four, and overall threat, he's a three. He gets a total 27. The ventriloquist, who also has Scarface as his second personality, he is one of my favorite villains. I'm, I'm surprised he's not more popular because he's, he's, he's psychologically extremely interesting. So his iconic level is only a three, but for me, my preference is a five. Always been fascinated by him. Formidable, I mean, he's the same as as maybe like Two Face or Penguin or 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 whatnot because he, he's really just kind of a a, a gang boss. Uh, his backstory is a four. His intellect is a four. His justification is a three. His determination is a four, and his overall threat is a four. That gives him a total of thirty. Man Bat, which will be my final of the top eleven, iconic level. He's only a three, but I, I've really I've always gravitated towards Man Bat. I always thought he was an interesting villain, and I thought he matched up well with Batman. He did. He was introduced in the Batman Detective Comics, so they they kind of made him. The, he's almost like the lizard version of for Spider Man. Um, he's Batman's lizard, if you will. So my preference for him is a four. Formidable, yes, he's a four. Backstory, he's a four. Intellect, I mean, he's a doctor that created the serum that made him into a bat. He's a four. His justification is a five. His determination is a four. And his overall threat is a three, which gives him a total of 31. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of the bottom 11. I'm just going to kind of list all of them off just so you know who they are and who they were included. I'll show you the the Excel list at the, at the end of this. We got at number 12, Mad Hatter, Killer Croc, Joe Chill, Red Hood, 
Dr. Hugo Strange, Black Mask, Clayface, Hush, Deadshot, Victor Zaz, and Firefly. I did not include Deathstroke because I don't consider him a Batman villain. He's more of a Teen Titans, Robin slash Nightwing villain. So he didn't fall into this list. Okay, so now for the Spider-Man villains. Now the Spider-Man, the most iconic of the villains is the Green Goblin. He's overall in all of comics, my second favorite villain. So iconic level, he gets a five. My preference, he gets a five. Formidable, he's a five. Backstory, he's a five. Intellect, he's a five. Justification, he's a five. Determination, he's a five. And overall threat, he's a five. So he got the best score you could get, which is a 40. Dr. Octopus falls into the same category. He's just as iconic. I don't love Dr. Octavius as much as a villain as I do the Green Goblin. So he, he only gets a four, but that's still pretty high. He's extremely formidable. He gets a four there. He's got a decent backstory. He's got a four. His intellect is a five. His justification is a four. His determination is a five. And his overall threat is a four. So that gives him a 36. Hello, Peter. Venom, he's become as iconic as he is. So he gets a five for being as iconic as he is now. My preference for him is a four. It's, it's high, but it's not, you know, he's not a top tier villain for me as far as Spider-Man goes. He's formidable on an extremely level, just like the Green Goblin and just like Dr. Octavius. His backstory is a five. His intellect is a four. His justification is a five. His determination is a five. And his overall threat is a five. That gives him a total 38. Number four for Spider-Man is the Kingpin. Now, I know people are saying like, oh no, he's a main villain for Daredevil. Yes, but he initially was a Spider-Man villain. He was introduced in the Spider-Man comics. He's remained a Spider-Man villain and a, a quintessential Spider-Man villain, even though he's Daredevil's number one villain. So he remains as one of the Spider-Man villains on this list. Iconic, he's a five because, I mean, he's showing up. He's showing up in, like, the the Hawkeye show. He shows up as a villain to Daredevil, as his main villain. He he was in the he was in the Hulk TV show movie as the main villain. So, like, this guy's all over the place. He gets a five. For me, he's a four. Formidable, he's a four. Backstory, he's a four. Intellect, he's a four. Justification, four. Determination, he's a five. And then overall threat, he's a four. So, he gets a total 34. Craven the Hunter is number five. His iconic level is four. That could go up if this movie does well that's coming out or if he ends up being the Sinister Six in one of the future movies. Right now, though, he's only a four. For me, he's a five. He's my second favorite Spider-Man villain. Formidable? Oh, yeah. He, I mean, he literally buried Spider-Man alive. I would call him formidable to Spider-Man. His backstory is a five. His Intellect is a four. His justification is a five. His determination is a five. And his overall threat is a three. That gives him a total of 36. The Hobgoblin. Iconic? Almost. He's, he's a four. For me, I love him. I mean, he's right there with the Green Goblin and, and Craven. So I give him a five there. Formidable? He's a four. Backstory? He's a five. Intellect? He's a three. Justification? He's a four determination he's a three and overall threat he's a three that gives him a total of 32 number seven is going to be mysterio mysterio would have had a lower iconic level until he ended up being in a movie so he does get a four preference for me he's a four i you know he's one of my top tier spider-man villains uh formidable yeah he's fairly formidable uh he gets a three there his backstory is a three his intellect is a three. His justification is a four. His determination is a three. And then his overall threat is a four. So he gets a total of 28. The chameleon. This is one where it's like nobody, he's not that iconic with respect to the Spider-Man villains. Um, although in all fairness, he should be considered. I mean, his first appearance was Amazing Spider-Man number one. And he's shown up throughout several times preference for me yeah I, I i do like him he he's one of he's in my top tier he's he's a number four for me um formidable yeah he's a four because he can he can emulate spider-man and make everybody think that he's spider-man and, and then commit crimes and then blame spider-man backstory he's a four intellect he's a four justification he's a three 
determination, he's a four. And overall threat, he's a four. I mean, he could impersonate the president. So he gets an overall number of 30. Okay, the lizard. The lizard I always liked. He's iconic. He gets a four. And for me, his preference, he gets a four. Formidable? Yeah, he's fairly formidable. He's a four. His backstory is a five because he has a very close relationship with Peter Parker. Intellect, he's a four. Justification, he's a five. Determination, he's a four. And then overall threat, he's a four. And that is based on him wanting, as the lizard, wanting to turn everybody into lizards. So that's not good. That's not good for society. His, uh, his overall number would be a 34. Electro. I liked you better before. Who, I mean, I was never a huge fan of Electro, but I'll admit he's an iconic villain of Spider-Man. So Electro gets a four. For me, he's a three. Formidable, yeah. I mean, he, he could wreak havoc all over the land. Backstory, I don't know. I'll give him a three. Intellect, he's only a three. Justification, he's a two. Determination, he's a three. And then overall threat, he's a four. So he gets a total of 27. And then the last of the top 11 iconic villains of Spider-Man is going to be Sandman. He's iconic. Yeah, he gets a four. Preference, I never really liked Sandman. So he's he's only gets a two for me. Formidable, yeah, he's a five. Backstory, he's a four. Intellect, he's only a two. He's a street level moron. I should add justification. I mean, he, he's he's robbing to save his family. I believe his daughter that he you know he's trying to save. Um, so his justification is four. Determination, he's a three, and then his overall threat is a four. That gives him a total of twenty eight. The bottom eleven villains for Spider Man. I'm not going to go into the details or or their total numbers. I'll show you those at the end. But that's the Vulture. Vulture is one who is very iconic. I just I had to go with there was only eleven iconic for Batman. So he so Vulture falls twelve. He had to fall into that category. So I got Vulture. I got Mister Negative. Carnage number fifteen would be Scorpion. Number sixteen is Rhino. Shocker. Morbius. Prowler, Tombstone, Hammerhead, and Jack-O-Lantern. So our final hypotheses showed that Batman in his top 11 had a total score of 347, while Spider-Man had a total score of 363. That means in the top 11, Spider-Man wins. Now the bottom 11, if you add the two together, the top 11, the, the, the overall 22 as it were, Batman gets a 560 and Spider-Man gets a 589. So Spider-Man wins the day. However, these numbers could be different for you. I encourage you to plug those in in a similar fashion. You can always come up with your own categories, um, but I, I, I would do at least five categories so that you have something to go by. Now that I've given you my conclusions, and bear in mind, these are based on my personal preferences and some of these are my interpretation of what's the best intellect justification and all that. It might be different for you. So I recommend that you throw all these numbers into an Excel spreadsheet that's based on your own solutions. See what you come up with. And there you'll have it. Your preference as to who has the better rogue gallery. Because you might surprise yourself. It might be a different number or it might, might be a different solution than your own personal preference. Because for me, I knew Spider-Man was mine, but I wanted to make sure, and I did find out that it was Spider-Man. So I want to thank you for watching. I'm Foxy Sellers. If you would, please click the like, go ahead, subscribe, get keyed into more like this, and do me a favor, comment below. If, you, if I left out a villain, go ahead and mention that. Or if you just have a different conclusion as, as to what, the um, intellect or justification or your, your preferences for certain villains, go ahead and put that in. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.